It has been five minutes. The sun has risen again, and it is now tomorrow in this timeless land we all congregate in. I don't know why day and night does not pass, or why you can stay here forever, but you can. Although maybe you can't. I haven't stayed here long enough for time to pass. Maybe it does. It just doesn't count. Count, count against anything. Right. Th 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 squirt the stuff on him. Everybody do it with the green juice and he will be cured. And I'm trying to make not make this sound really bad. Look at that guy's hair. It looks like a bunch of grapes. Allow me to distract from what I just said. He's the CEO of a telecom company, Alpin. His boundless ambition drove him to expand his telecommunication business into areas like space travel, food, and entertainment. Um, do we want to rescue him? Is he a good person to rescue? Uh, thanks for getting me out of there. The name's Don Bergman, but a lot of folks just call me Dobbs. I'm a treasure hunter by trade. Mostly, I just travel the galaxy, fighting the good guy, a good fight on behalf of the little guys. Good to meet you. So, Dobby, do you, by any chance, know of a veterinarian called Nelly? Know her? <laughs> Nelly's a colleague of mine, along with York. But when we tried to land on this planet, we lost control of our ship and crashed. I'm sorry to hear that. How did you manage after the crash? We just tried to stay alive. We came across this kind of glowing syrup. We harvested at dawn, make juice out of it. Really, you must be talking talking about glow sap. You drink it? How does it taste? Not too bad, actually. Cobites are famously fussy eaters, and I believe their taste buds are quite different from our own. You may recall when Dingo mistook it for a common beverage and drank some. That was a rough night. Pass. If you were with your colleagues and had plenty of food, then why were you all alone when we found you? Oh, uh, well, one day someone just dro popped out of nowhere and stole our juice. The three of us ran after him. But at some point, I lost sight of York. And the next thing I know, Nellie's being dragged away by a giant dog-like creature. <laughs> So you were separated. That's horrible. The bear. Yeah, I kept walking around looking for them, but I got so hungry I passed out. When I woke up, I was here with you. Oh, we think we saw one of your companions being abducted. Can you, go? Can you remember the last place you saw the other one? Not exactly, but they couldn't be too far from where you found me. That's a ball. Understood. You can rest assured that their rescue is our top priority. Officers, let's narrow our search down to Giant's Hub, the place that... Really the only place we could be going. We have one companion. According to Nellie's companion, Dawn Bergman, she may be in Giant's Hearth. Get back out there and find her. Ochi is counting on you. Pardon? Plucking Pikmin is kind of relevant when it comes to uh, certain, like, Dandori challenges, so I think it's it's good. It's, it's good for me to get this now, um, and I'm going to fully upgrade it just right now. Yeah, look, look how fast he can pluck now. That's going to save us a lot of time in these Dandori challenges. Take a look at the notes section. You'll find it full of Olimar's brilliant observations. Now then, do things. <laughs> Wait, we can get Olimar's notes now? Uh-oh. 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 Huh. How am I gonna handle this? I- ugh. I don't wanna read through all of these again. Um. Man, but there's so much cool lore. There's so much lore! I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. We're gonna continue uh, with with what's his face's notes, but man, that's gonna be rough. 
Since it's exceptionally large, when it squirms to move or wriggles minutely side to side to dig its whole body into the ground like a drill, you can observe it in all its exceptional detail. The way it moves is quite enchanting to watch. If only we could super duper size all the creatures like this. The, ma the mama sh sugar grub will typically molt when it reaches maturity, then dig itself into the ground to prepare for egg laying. However, certain types, like this specimen, exhibit neoteny and retain the appearance of a juvenile of the species. Oh, man. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I want to read all of this. Having a body made up of living cells, a metabolism, and the ability to produce offspring might be considered necessary traits to determine if something is truly alive. But this rapid-fire cannon blows away conventional definitions. I is it a machine and a creature? What a fascinating possibility. This species of the arachnor family fuses with machinery at a crucial point in the mat maturation process, giving it the ability to fire en energy bursts from the launcher beneath its orbular torso. However, the man at legs itself is not in control of this weapon. Instead, the mechanical por portions of its structure appear to automatically acquire and attack targets. The man at, leg has a gentle disp man at legs has a gentle disposition, and as a member of the arachnoid family, it has no natural enemies. It is particularly difficult to understand why this species would de uh, develop such awesome offensive capabilities, leading to rumors among the scientific community that it was a machinery that approached the arachnorb and proposed this symbiotic relationship. That is an exact quote, I'm pretty sure, of the Pikmin 2 dialogue, which is good, because that means that I can probably only read Olimar's descriptions for the new... The new enemies. And maybe we switch to doing that. I, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I I feel like this is more interesting to me than it is you guys. But maybe I start reading highlights of these. I don't know. This species has some remaining or, uh, organic uh, internal organs. But its carapace and eyes are made of, of inorganic material. All 19 of its eyes are actually photoelectric sensors that the species uses to precisely locate its prey. The gas emitted from the posterior of its first leg joints includes a chemical substance that, after making contact with another organism's brain, temporarily controls that organism's actions. The groovy long legs uses this natural phenomenon, called the endless dance, to make its prey jump between its legs while it moves around in bizarre rhythms. The entire interaction is seemingly odd for a living organism, but the line between organic and inorganic on this planet is not always clear. I find this a lot more interesting than than his than Dalmos. This I I is good lore. So I think we might just switch to Olimar's, even though Dalmos fun to read. I think he's had his time in the spotlight. And we can start learning about these creatures from Olimar's point of view, which is far more interesting and ed educational. Most of what, what Dalmos says is just fawning over these monsters, and that doesn't tell me anything. Like this. Let's let's go to the Smoky Prog. I don't want to see him. I want to read about him. Yeah, like, okay. Y yeah, he's gonna... He, he talks about what it is. That's not interesting. But this, this will be interesting. The Smoky Prog's body was constantly deteriorating, so collecting a living sample has proven difficult, and research into the species has progressed at a glacial rate. However, by examining the genes anchored to the Smoky Prog's eggs, it has been confirmed that they are, in fact, Mammuta eggs. This discovery allows for the possibility that Mammuta do, that do not develop properly uh, and hatch to become Smoky Prog's. If, hypothetically, a Mammuta were to um, remain above ground at night and absorb glow sap, that might impact the nu nutrient levels within its egg yolk. That change could lead to the embryo's inviability and break down its enzymes. Then, maybe... Also, we never saw that attack, but that is frightening. That is very frightening. We're gonna have to, we'd have to jump that with Ochi, so we should keep that in mind. Although they've been named Glow Pikmin, it's not entirely clear whether or not the species is actually a type of Pikmin. These creatures possess the same fundamental behaviors of Pikmin, like carrying things, propagating, and fighting. They also share some special characteristics, such as the leaf atop their head. Yet, they do not spawn from an onion, but a luminal, and they are only active at night or underground. During the day, they revert into seeds and enter a resting state. What's even more surprising is that they exhibit no signs of life. When a glow pikmin dies, if that word can even be used, it does not ex expire in the typical sense. Instead, it just becomes a form of light, or perhaps a photon, and returns to the luminal. Putting aside my scientist hat for a moment, it seems to me that this creature or entity may not be a living organism at all, but some manner of spiritual substance. 
Besides the fact that they serve as incubators and nests for glow pikmin, we know very little about the luminal's ecology. When nocturnal creatures die, a luminal can break them down into glow pellets through its strong dissolving en enzymes. This matter, when condensed, becomes glow sap. One might assume glow sap is then an extremely dangerous substance, but it has hardly any negative effects. In fact, I've had it administered to me personally as a curative medicine to break down growing leaves. Luminals will only appear in places where an onion was located earlier in the day, and since they propagate glow pikmin, one could surmise that they are they are rhizomes. Rhizome? I don't actually don't know what that is. From those onions. Perhaps using its dissolving powers, it returns the nectar that supports the ecosystem back to the soil. That oh I'm I'm learning so much. Uh what are things we never got to learn about from Olimar? This spider-like creature has a distinctive has distinctive yellow stripes on its black carapace. It spins web webs in high traffic areas and waits for prey to blunder into them. Unlike its relatives in the Arachnorb and Dweeble families, this ambisexual ha it's ambisexual and has eight legs. Some theorize that its gynetry is meant to aid in reproduction, though of course it cannot reproduce on its own. There is another theory that this species is in fact two organisms of opposing gender stuck together, but since no one has ever founded a four-legged, single-sexed specimen, this remains speculative. I'm not expecting anything different from the water wraith, but we gotta try. All that is known about this creature stems from the few sightings deep underground. All reported sightings feature the same corset of details, a giant viscous form with a clear, hazy sheen, not unlike hard candy. This is an exact quote so, so far. Ah! Wait, what did I just press? What did I just press? What? I press ZL and I'm fighting it again? That's a thing? Why? Why is that a thing? Go back. Get me out. Piclopedia. No, not reset. Get me out. I did not realize that was a thing. One theory holds that it may be the ectoplasmic reincarnation of a kind of psychic phenomenon, but as is usually the case with such theories, it is very difficult to prove. All witnesses report being suddenly overcome with fear upon sighting the creature, approaching a state of panic and near insanity. In fact, every report contains an inordinate amount of extremely vague details, which has led to suspicions that exhaustion and fear have caused some s simple natural phenomena to be viewed as a living creature. That is an identical, that is an exact quote. This species is definitely a member of the Pikmin genus, but its body does not share any of the plant-like traits that Pikmin are known for. Instead, it's composed primarily of stone. The stone is actually the chosen host for a parasitic subset of Pikmin uh, nicknamed Hermitkmin. Similar to how a seed can sprout and push through the cracks of a rock, the Pikmin's roots stretch deep into the stone, storing its vital organs in an interior cavity that resembles a crystal geode. Because this speci species displays characteristics common in parasiticism, uh, one could hypothesize that the rock onion and rock candy pop bud stockpile stone that will eventually host the rock Pikmin. Pikmin supposedly evolved from plants, yet there are also Pikmin species with bodies made of ice, known as ice Pikmin. How is this possible? The answer to this question lies in the fact that ice Pikmin are parasitic by nature, and the ice serves as their host. The composition of this type of ice is, predictably, mostly water, but it resembles a saline solution, uh, it resembles saline solution with faint concentrations of trace sodium ions, potassium, and calcium ions that function as neural transmitters. Interestingly, the ice exhibits no visual signs of melting or dripping when exposed to sunlight. This is due to its low temperature core, which it can continuously creates more ice in order to obtain or maintain a consistent size. To my great surprise, Olimar contributed descriptions to my treasure catalog. He provides a different perspective on the treasures than I do. Yes, his entries are well worth reading. What does Olimar have to say then? Let's let's pick something. Let's pick a new thing. I keep doing that this recording session. What a refreshing aroma, and what charming decorations, and that gorgeous color too. Popular with the young crowd, this spaceship wakes you up as it whisks you away on a minty fresh journey to another planet. Just don't take a bite out of it, or you'll never make it back. One whiff of this brings me back to the long days of summer, eating ice cream with my kids. This fragrance smells like their favorite flavor, bright and refreshing. At first I didn't want to try it, but my ch children insisted. Now it's my favorite ice cream flavor too. Olmar, I love how the dichotomy of Olmar as a character, uh, he, yeah, this is sweet. It's like this. 
these are all the same. We're, we've kind of exhausted Schnauz's uh, opinions on some of these, like the memory fragments. But Olimar go cuts right to the heart. As a young boy, I collected rocks and shiny objects that I held quite dear. My parents always wanted me to get rid of them, but I refused. I can't even remember where I found them all. I probably picked up most of them right in our own backyard. I'm still not sure why I was so attached to a bunch of gravel, but they shone like diamonds to me. I love that. I love that. That's, ah. Uh, it makes me want to read everything that Olimar is going to write. That's amazing. Look at this. As a child, there were many times I'd come across something unknown to me and intuitively investigate without hesitation. It worked out well for me, I believe. As an adult, I often overthink matters, so maybe I just need to recapture that darling spirit, my dar the daring spirit of my youth. I love that. If you want to read it, you can pause it. But Olimar's dialogue is so good. It it satisfies the 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 Lortho, the Vorthos in me, and the the like story driven writer in me. I know it's impossible to read minds, but I'm particularly clueless when it comes to relationships. When we first started dating, my wife was gracious enough to explain how she felt in great detail. I'm still awkward, but any social skills I have are thanks to her. Everything! Everything we read! In Olimar's point of view, it's- oh my word! It's so easy to lose someone's trust, despite the fact that it takes so long to build it in the first place. But once you have that trust and support, it's much easier to achieve your goals. I'd rather be able to count on someone I trust than leave it all up a chance. This is insanely good writing. I'm blown away. It, it really feels like somebody poured their heart into into this. <sighs> Listen close to this tale of the Ballad of the Gale. Thunder, heavy wind, the tempest shall begin. Some in clouds, some in rain, I will sculpt a hurricane as the elements perform. Play the song and you'll see it's a cursed melody. Ships sink by the score, leagues from any shore. Now the song has been played, everybody is afraid, frightened of the song of storms. Hoist the sails, nice and high, seagulls gliding in the sky, rolling on the sea, a thundering shanty. Creaking pine, splashing brine, life lived on the borderline, course set to escape the norm. Thunderclap, rigging snaps, chaos on the weather map, speed of the typhoon, strength of the monsoon. We will sail and prevail, May our courage never fail, cold air mixes with the warm. Bolt of light breaks the blue, ever shall your blades are true. Waker of the wind, courage from within. Golden hand, I'll command, wash away this ancient land. Let a ray of hope shine on the world, sails unfurled. Da na 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 na. My son is always playing some sort of adventure game. He becomes the hero, defeats his arch nemesis, and saves the day at last. I admire heroic figures like that, but if given choice, I choose my own life again and again. Why are Olimar's lines so good? Ah. Oh. They say that following the straight and narrow path is a virtue, but I've learned firsthand that it doesn't always lead you to your destination. When I started working directly under the president of Hokitate Freight, I thought it was the inevitable next step in my career. All it led to was piles and piles of paperwork. I'll be happy if my kids take a slightly twisted route in life, 
as long as it helps them achieve their dreams. <laughs> okay, certainly, the think tank combo bot head, he's not gonna make me tear up. I was in awe of it of modular robots when I was growing up. Their strength and abilities impressed me to my core. I doubt anyone's ever admired me in such a way, but maybe that's not so bad. I find great satisfaction in being re respected as an equal. <laughs> Olmar, you're... I love you. You are... Oh, my word. <laughs> I love this. Ooh, 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 snap. What is he going to say about the Winged Freedom Sculpture? I keep doing that! Okay, read this because it looks funny. I see a sort of winged aspect, but mostly this reminds me of a model spaceship I played with as a kid. The overall design is perfect for transcending all kinds of atmospheric barriers. Plus, it looks so cool. Olimar's existence is really disincentivizing me from reading every single bit of dialogue in this game. And Dalmo and Schnauz have been stagnating a little bit. So maybe I don't- maybe I read some of it in my off time and give you the highlights, but man, is does Olimar's dialogue good for that? For, in, for both of them, he just knocks them out of the park. Oh my word. The writers- oh, the writers are so good. Where's our newest person? 